I believe you can answer your own data analysis questions. Do you? You should. Stick around for another episode of Code Club. I'm your host, Pat Schloss, and it's my goal to help you to grow in confidence to ask and answer questions about the world around us using data. Normally, when we think about computer programs, we think of something like a web browser or an app on your phone. In the past few episodes, we have used a variety of programs, including Git and Atom. But a computer program is really only a set of instructions telling a computer how to do something. It can be simple or quite complex. I think of a computational research project as writing a computer program. At first, it doesn't seem very complicated. A few commands to get my raw data, a few more to process the raw data, and finally, several commands to generate figures and run statistical tests. But by slowly building up the project, it becomes a pretty complicated computer program. This is not a metaphor. We have the ability to piece together different programs, as well as programs we write, to instruct the computer how to convert raw data into a finished product. You might think you can't possibly write your own computer program. You can. In today's episode, we'll take the first steps of converting our work from the past few episodes into small programs that we can execute from our command line interface. We may not always appreciate it, but when we're working at the command line, we're using a terminal program, but also a program that provides the command line interface called Bash. Today, we will learn how to write simple programs, also called scripts, to automatically download our data and put it in the correct location. As we go forward through our project, we will use this approach to create an automated and reproducible workflow. Writing these types of programs is critical to achieving our overarching goal of understanding the sensitivity and specificity of Amplicon sequence variants. Even if you don't have a clue what Amplicon sequence variants are, I'm sure you'll get a lot out of this episode. Also, at the end of the episode, I have several exercises for you to work on. If you haven't been following along but would like to, please check out the blog post that accompanies this video where you can find instructions on catching up. Now, please take the time to watch today's episode, follow along on your own computer, and attempt the exercises. Don't worry if you're not sure how to solve the exercises. At the end, I'll provide solutions. In the notes below this video is a link to the blog post for today's episode. This will include installation instructions, reference notes, and links. They're meant to be a supplement to the material in the video. Finally, don't forget to like and subscribe the Riffamonas channel. Please click on the bell icon when you subscribe so that you're notified when the next episode is released. In the last several episodes, we've worked with um, downloading our raw data and our reference files, as well as documenting the steps that we took in our readme files. Now, that's great because we have a documentation of how we got them, but even better would be an automated script that when we run this script does all those steps for us so we don't have to worry about copying and pasting or retyping things and causing errors. That's the goal for today, is that we want to create an issue and go work through the issue and then close it that converts the information in our readme files into automated scripts. Along the way, we'll learn quite a bit about bash scripting and different tools that we can use to make a remote, more robust analysis. So I'm over here in GitHub and uh, my project repository. I'm going to go ahead and create a new issue, which will be to convert um, instructions from readme files into bash scripts. Okay. And I think this is pretty self-explanatory, uh, but let me just list out what we need uh, to be sure that we've uh, included in our bash script. So we need to download um, the Silva seed reference and download, I guess I should perhaps say um, download, extract, and place that the RNDB files. Okay. And I'll go ahead and use our cool markdown checkoff checkbox from last time. I think there needs to be a space between those brackets, and if I preview it, that looks good. Okay, so submit that issue. Uh, this is issue eight, so I will come over into my terminal, and I need to navigate to my uh, project home. So I have that in documents under Schloss RRN Analysis XXX 2020. Get status. I'm on the master branch. Everything is good. We're up to date. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do git branch. I'm going to go ahead and do git branch issue 8 and then git checkout issue 8. So it says I'm on branch 8. Again, just to be careful, I always do a uh, git status ls to see where I'm at and we're good to go. Okay, so again, what we want to do is we want to create bash scripts that downloads the various files that we have. I'm going to use Atom to um, do all this work because working in Nano as a text editor is a, a real pain in the butt. All right, so let's... The first thing I want to do is, as a test, I'm going to create a new bash script in my project root directory that I'll call hello.sh. And this is going to be the first bash shell script that we run. The first thing that our shell scripts need is what's called a shebang, S-H-E-B-A-N-G, shebang, the whole shebang. I don't know if, they, if those expressions are related, uh, but that's a pound sign, exclamation point, forward slash user, forward slash bin, E-N-V, bash. Okay. So when we run this script, that line, the shebang line, tells our computer what to use to understand the code that follows. And so uh, every, whenever you learn a new programming language, the first uh, program they have you write is a program that prints out hello world. So we'll do the same. So we can use echo, which is a bash uh, program or function that outputs whatever follows the word echo. So we'll say hello world, exclamation point. And I'll go ahead and save this. Okay, so again, our shell script is very simple. It has two pieces of information. The first is the shebang line, uh, this first line here, which again tells our computer what program to use to understand the code that follows. And the second is our instructions. And in this case, we're using the echo function to tell our computer to say, hello world. So I'll save this and I'll come back to my terminal. And if I ls, I now see that I have hello.sh. So something I want to introduce to you is uh, another argument for the ls function. I think at the very first episode of this series on Amplicon sequence variants, I talked about ls. So if I do ls space hyphen l, that gives me a long listing of the output. Now, normally I do ls hyphen lth. And so the t means sort the output by the time that it was created, so the most recent stuff up top. And the h means to put the file sizes, uh, this column here, in more human-readable output. Okay. So hopefully you can see slightly different output. Initially it was uh, alphabetical with all caps, with capital letters first, followed by lowercase. And here, again, we're sorting it by date modified. One of the other things that you'll see on the left side here is a series of information about uh, the files. And so what, if you see an R, that means that it's readable. If you see a W, that means it's writable. Uh, we don't want to go too far into it, but it also gets into different permissions of who can read, who can write, who can do whatever. And if you see a D, that means that the, that, that is a directory. Okay, so we don't want it to be readable or writable. We want it to be executable. So what we can do is chmod plus x hello.sh. So what this means is modify hello.sh to be executable. The x means executable. Again, I do lslth, and now I see that I've got these x's uh, in this first column of my file. What that allows me to do now is if I do period forward slash hello.sh, it says hello world. Okay. If I don't want it to be executable, I could do chmod minus x Uh, and, and it removes the executable, and then if I run it, it says permission denied. So again, we want it to be executable. So plus x hello.sh period forward slash hello.sh. Very good. We've written our first program in Bash. Well done. Okay, that's pretty silly. <laughs> um, that, it's not going to get us very far in our data analysis. If we come back and we look at our data um, um, references 
if we look at that readme file, we see that we had this list of instructions that we created, included these three lines to download our Silver reference file, to create a directory to store it, and then extract into that directory. What I want to do is in my code directory, I'm going to create a new script that I will call get silva seed.sh. Again, we don't want spaces in our file name, so I use underscores, and this is going into the code directory. I can then copy those lines of code, and again, I can do my shebang line at the very top. User bin env bash. We save that. That looks good. And I can then do chmod plus x code get silvaseed.sh. And now I can do period forward slash code get silvaseed.sh. And it runs. It says the file exists. Uh, the, the TGZ file is already there. It's not going to retrieve it. The directory already exists, so it's not going to create it. And then it extracts those files into uh, my directory. Very good. That's great. So again, we've automated updating our Silva seed file. Now, that's great, um, but this doesn't tell us a whole lot. If I were to come back to this file in a few weeks or a few months, I might not really remember what's going on here. So what I can do is write a comment to indicate uh, who wrote it, the name of the program, what the inputs are, what the outputs are, a little bit about what it does. And so at the top, I always like to put this. So I might put author, uh, Pat Schloss, uh, inputs, none, outputs, um, places the uh, Silva seed reference alignment into uh, data references forward slash Silva seed. And also we like these to be, you know, maybe only 80 or 100 columns wide. And I'll also put in here some information about what's going on here. So uh, we download this version of the Silva reference to help with aligning our sequence data. Um, this is version 138. Uh, I think this came out in 2020, maybe 2019. But again, for illustrating comments, it doesn't really matter. Um, because the TGZ file contains a readme file, we extracted to a directory within references, within data references, OK? That's enough, right? Um, and again, it's enough information so that I can come back to it and understand what was going on here. Very good. So I can save that. And again, I can, I've already modified the permission. So again, if I do lslth code get silva, it's still executable. And again, if I do code get silva seed.sh, everything's, everything's good. All right. So great. We've written our first real script for downloading and processing data. Let's turn now to those RRNDB files. So I can close this and close this. And if I go to, um, that was in raw, readme, I have these series of four, four sets of code to download different files. So I'm going to start with the FASTA file, uh, which is right here, and create a new file that I will save as uh, code. And I will call this get rndb fasta.sh and copy those lines in there. And again, I need my shebang line. User bin env uh, bash. And you can see that Adam is very friendly uh, in, in uh, providing the shebang line for us, so we perhaps don't have to remember it. And this works great. 
Um, and I can again say author, patch loss, inputs, none, outputs. Uh, and this is going to output the RRNDB uh, 5.6 uh, underscore 16s underscore RRNA dot fast a into data raw. chmod plus x code get RRNDB that. If I look in my code directory, I see that those are both executables now. And so I can do period forward slash code get rndb fast sh. It, it was already there, so it didn't retrieve it. It, art, it extracted uh, the file. We're good to go. All right. So we'll keep chugging along. And what I'm going to do is because this is going to be very similar for the other programs is I'm going to copy this, open up a new script, and then save this into code as get rndb, uh, and I'm going to get the tsv file, tsv.sh. And this will download the tsv into data raw. Um, and I need to change this, tsv, and this to tsv. Okay. All right. And so I will then chmod that. Or my LSLTH to make sure everything looks good oh, in code. And I see that they're all executable. Okay. So I'll do code get rntsb tsv.sh. And I think maybe I screwed something up here. I just double copy those over just in case. Ah, uh, yeah. So they had 16s RNA uh, FASTA. So we don't want that. Sometimes copying and pasting isn't a good thing. Okay. So let me rerun that. That works great. So we could keep doing this. Perhaps what you notice is the only difference between these two files is the file name. Uh, I notice I've got uh, the P on the up opposite or the NC on the opposite side over here for one of these. That doesn't really matter. Uh, but really the only thing that's different between them is the file that I'm downloading. And and that's it seems kind of silly to have four or five scripts that all do the same thing. And the only thing changing is the file name. So what we're going to do is we're next going to learn how we can bring in arguments from the command line to make our code dry, D-R-Y, which is short for don't repeat yourself. So if you, again, compare these different scripts, I'm repeating myself an awful lot. And the problem with keeping with not being dry is say I wanted to update one of the arguments or uh, location perhaps, perhaps instead of saving it to data raw, I decide I want to save it to data RNDB. Well, then I have to update all of my scripts. That's a real pain. If I have one script to download all these files, but where I change what I'm passing to it, then it's much easier to maintain that code. So the variables that come in from the command line are assigned a value or a, a variable name of dollar sign one. And so we could then do, um, I'll say file, or I'll say archive equals dollar sign one, okay? Now, to demonstrate what's going on here, I will go ahead and say echo quote dollar sign archive. So when I run this, it's not going to uh, download the files. All it's going to output is the file name I give it. So I've got get rndb tsv.sh. So I can do uh, code get rndb tsh. And let me give it a, um, a file name. So I'll say data uh, raw rndb um, dot tsv. And all it should do is say output uh, this file name. And sure enough, that's what it's done. Okay. So again, we can use that, that variable now archive, wherever we want to insert the archive name, right? So like, 
right here, right? We could replace that with archive and it will output it. So two things I want you to notice about how I called it. So first is that there's a dollar sign before archive. That tells Bash that it's a variable. The other thing is that you don't necessarily need those quotes uh, for it to work, uh, but it's safest, right? So if you happen to have a space in your file name, then those spaces are gonna wreak havoc with, what, with what's happening. Alternatively, you might think, well, maybe I'll just use single quotes. And so what you see ha what happens with single quotes is that instead of putting the variable in for dollar sign archive, it outputs dollar sign archive. So in these cases, we generally want to use double quotes. Okay. So I'm going to uncomment those lines. And wherever I have the file I'm downloading, I'm going to put in double quotes, dollar sign archive. And I'll put that there as well. Very good. I can get rid of that. I will save that. And so now if I uh, run this, it does everything. Ah, it didn't work because I gave it my local path rather than the name of the file or the name of the archive. And maybe I'll put in zip and that should work. And so that works. But you know what? I don't really want to put in zip. Um, I want to put in the name of my local file because that's going to be easier for me to remember. So what I can do is I can add .zip to the end of these, save it. And now if I put in the name of the TSV file, that should work. And similarly, if I put in um, the names of the uh, FASTA files, so 5.6.FASTA, Okay, so I'm getting an error message there, and I think I've got the wrong file name. So maybe that's the archive, or the, uh, the name of the file inside the archive. Let's see, if I do ls data raw, I see, nope, it's, it's 16srna.fasta, so I'm giving it the wrong file. So again, if I do uh, 5.6, uh, underscore 16s underscore r rna dot fast a that works and similarly if i did rrndb hyphen 5.6 uh, underscore pan taxa underscore stats underscore ncbi dot tsv that works as well very good so i've been using this code get rndb tsv.sh. I also have that other one that I created. So I want to give these perhaps better names. So what I'll do is I'll first get rid of my git rndb uh, fasta file, move that to trash, and I will rename this to git rndb files. Okay. And uh, the inputs are the name of the uh, file extracted from the archive without the path, okay? And that then outputs the appropriate to data raw and I think we're good. So I'll go ahead and save that. And again, I, I ls my code, ls-lth code. I see that I have git rndb files, git silva seed, and both of those are executables. And I can test this again. Um, but you know what? I've already got the stuff in there. So that's really not that hard to do. If I do ls data raw, why don't I go ahead and delete uh, my TSV files and then see if I can regenerate them. So I'll do rm data raw up, and data raw zip. Now let's let's do the test. Code get rndb files 
and I'll get rndb hyphen 5.6.tsv. It downloads it, extracts it, it's good. If I do ls uh, data raw, I see my TSV files are there. So again, the advantage of what we've done is uh, two things. So first, instead of having to go into those readme files to copy the code into the terminal to run them, uh, we've got them in a script. And if I want to get the files, I run the script. Uh, it's much more convenient than having to go into those readme files. Also, uh, because we had those re repeated lines, right? So if we again look at the data raw readme, uh, we have four files we're downloading and the, the commands are the same except for this chunk, right? And so in the principle of dry, don't repeat yourself, we created one function, one file, uh, one bash script that does this, but where we feed into it the name of the output file, which is, which is pretty snazzy, uh, and again, makes it easier to maintain the code. So before I forget, I forgot to commit and um, push my changes. So again, git status, uh, I need to get rid of that hello sh. I don't want to keep it around. So I'll do rm hello.sh, get status. I'll go ahead and get add both of these. All right, and I'll do git commit. I'll do automate downloading um, rrndb and silva files. Very good. I'm on branch eight. As it says, I'm going to go back to master merge in issue eight. So git uh, checkout master, git merge issue eight. That looks good. I forgot to close the issue, um, but that's okay. So we'll go ahead and do git push. And now if I come back to my issue tracker, uh, again, I can check these off and come back and grab my uh, commit. Oh, where to go? Right there. And I'll do closed with that. You'll see that it, it knows that that was the commit message and automatically formats that as a URL. So I'll go ahead and close and commit. And we've checked off another issue. So as always, I have a couple exercises for you to work through to practice your skills that we just covered in the tutorial. So the first asks you to create and close an issue to write a script that installs Mother. So you'll need to borrow code that we used from a previous episode uh, that was in code readme. Uh, the installation script should be stored in code and retained under version control, but we, wanna, we don't want the code in mother uh, to be under version control. And so that should still be protected in our .gitignore file. We also want to double check that running this from the command line works before closing the issue. And so I've given you some mother code here that will work without um, causing any problems. And so you don't need to know mother to be able to run um, that, that line of code. The second problem, the second exercise, I ask you to work on and close issue four. So you're gonna create an align sequences.sh script that runs um, that line that you just did for practicing to make sure mother was installed in the right place. Run it from the command line to make sure everything works. Go ahead and add star log file to your dot git ignore file so that you're ignoring the mother log files that are created. Again, pause the video, uh, work on it on your own, and then come back and press play, and I'll show you how I resolve those problems. Another issue we want to create is installing mother. So I'll go ahead and say install uh, write script to automate installing mother. And I'm pretty sure those instructions are in my code readme. Well, the URL is in there. So I'll go ahead and 
copy that and say uh, this information was in code readme. So we're gonna work on issue nine. So we need to create that branch. So I'll do get branch issue nine, get checkout issue nine. It says that we're on branch issue nine, nothing to commit, working tree clean. We're in good shape to get moving on this issue tracker. I'm gonna go ahead and copy that link and go there. Um, and you know what, I'm going to double check that this is the most recent release because there may have been a new release since we first did that. And sure enough, there is now a issue, uh, no, version 44.2. So I'm going to use that and I'm using Mac OS X. You use the one that works for you. And if I go ahead and copy that link and I will create a new script that I will save in code. I will save this as uh, install mother.sh. And again, I'll paste that down in there. So I'll do my shebang. Bash and uh, I'm gonna double check what I had before with um, uh, get RNDB files. I'm gonna just copy those. I'm not gonna use this exact code, but I, I want I don't want to reinvent the wheel here. So I do wget hyphen p uh, code mother and see uh, that, and then I will do unzip hyphen n hyphen d uh, code mother and I'll do yeah code mother forward slash this I'll get rid of those lines I'll save this I'll make sure that my install mother is executable and then I'll do code install mother So it looks like it's doing stuff. All right. Uh, so it's complaining that some of the stuff exists. So let me do ls code mother. And I see some of these other things are in here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete some of these to get rid of them. So I'm going to go and do um, rm hyphen rf. So that is a recursive force removal of mother and I'll do code forward slash uh, mother and let me rerun that see where it goes sometimes this takes a couple iterations to get it to work ls code mother so it put mother into mother uh, that's not exactly what I was hoping for. So let me try this one more time. I'll get rid of that. And I will get that there. Okay. And I'm going to have it extract into code. And I think this should work. Again, we get this figured out once, we don't have to worry about doing it again. And it has put it, I can see, into mother in the right place. Everything looks good and we're in good shape. So we wanna test it and I will copy the code from the blog post that accompanies this to make sure everything works well. and mother's clearly running, so it's in the right place. Everything is running. This might just take a few moments. All right, so that took 
about seven or eight minutes to run on my computer. Uh, there's a warning message that comes out at the end um, that was expected. Uh, it tells me that there were sequences that need to be reversed. So we got the reverse complement because these sequences were pulled out of genome sequences. Some are going in a forward direction, some are going in the reverse direction. And we use that flip equals true argument in mother's line seeks function to get them all into the right orientation. That's another benefit of aligning our sequences is to make sure they're all going in the same direction. Very good. So we have mother installed. And something that occurs to me um, is that I need to go ahead and put an author and uh, inputs none uh, needs. Um, yeah, none, no inputs. And then outputs um, mother installed in uh, the uh, code mother. And um, I guess some notes to say that the zip archive contains a directory called mother. So we can extract it directly to code. Very good. And we also want to update our readme because this is now version 42. Um, and um, I will say that um, code forward slash install mother dot sh installs mother. Another thing that I forgot that we needed uh, is wget as another dependency from a few issues, a few episodes back. So I'll go ahead and save that, save that, save that. Uh, we want to modify our dot get ignore. Uh, we see that code mother is already being ignored, which is good. And we also want to put in star log file to save that to ignore those files. And you see that they just turned gray as I saved that. And so anything in Atom that's grayed out like that is being ignored. So I'll go ahead and uh, come back to my terminal, do my git status. Um, everything looks good there. So I'll do git add dot git ignore, uh, readme.md, and then code install, git status, git commit, um, provide script to install mother to correct location. Very good, git checkout master, git merge issue nine. And I forgot to put the closes in again. Ah, maybe I'll remember for issue four. Um, and then we can do git push. And I will grab this code and come back to my issue tracker, issue nine, and I'll say closed with that. And everything pushed up well. So I'll go ahead and uh, comment and close the issue. So again, we're in good shape. So the next thing we want to work on is this issue four. So again, I'm on master, right? So I will then do git branch issue four, git checkout issue four. All right. And so again, for this issue, what we want to do is we're going to use align seeks to align the sequences in RNDB FASTA to the Silva reference alignment. The code that we want to run was what we previously ran in Mother. So if if I up arrow, I should get back to that. So I'll go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to paste this into my issue for now, uh, that this was the code we wanted. Um, okay. okay. And I'll go ahead and copy this. Oh. You don't need to copy everything. Um, and I will create a new script. I'll call align sequences. So this will be code align sequences.sh. 
and that's the code we're going to run. And again, we need our shebang to do user bin env bash and author patch loss uh, inputs. Uh, so the inputs are going to be two of them. So that and my this, I'll put these on separate lines so they're easier to read. And then outputs, um, it's going to be this align, I believe. We'll have to double check that. Okay. Also, um, point out what we, we saw earlier was uh, we need to include flip equals true to make sure all sequences are pointed in the same direction. Okay. So I think that will be good. I will go ahead and um, make it executable. So chmod it. So code align sequences.sh. And now I should be able to do forward slash align uh, code align sequences.sh. It'll run. Again, this will take seven or eight minutes. And then uh, we'll be ready to close out the issue. Uh, everything ran. We got that one warning message, but that was telling us that it had to flip the sequences. So we're in great shape. We'll do a, go ahead and get status. And I'll add code align sequences. Get commit. Align RNDB to Silva's seed reference alignment. All right, so get checkout master. Ah, I stopped myself. So we can we can edit our commit message if we have not pushed. So I can do git commit hyphen hyphen amend, and I will then say closes number four, and then I can save that, exit out. Phew! I caught myself. Again, to amend or change your commit message, you can use git commit space hyphen hyphen amend. That will then open up nano or whatever editor you're using. So git checkout master, git merge um, issue four, very good, git push. And we see that we've closed the issue. So we're back down to one issue now. Very good. Thanks again for joining me for this week's episode of Code Clip. Be sure that you spend time going through the exercises on your own to help reinforce your new skills. Even better would be for you to take the ideas we've worked through today and think about how they relate to your current projects. Perhaps you could experiment with converting some of your common data analysis processing steps into a script. I'd love to see how you are adapting what I have covered in this and other Code Club episodes. Also, please let me know what types of data analysis questions you have, and I'll do my best to answer them in a future Code Club. Finally, please be sure to tell your friends about Code Club and to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell so you know when the next Code Club video drops. Keep practicing, and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.